everybody. Yeah. Welcome to our live stream, daily live stream, always 12 to 1 East time. So, um, <laughs> so I hope like uh, you have like a good time. I don't know what is the weather at the opposite of uh, Canada. How is it for you, Sid? Oh, it's not so bad. Oh, what about in Quebec? I know uh, it's a little bit more moist down there. It's really dry in Alberta. Uh, how is it for you guys? Uh, look at my hair. You understand everything. <laughs> no, it's really, really warm. It's uh, actually, it's a big like canicule right now. It's just, um, well, I, of course I, you I actually, the weekend. <laughs> I sleep with my small like uh, ventilator and just like, oh my God. <laughs> I, uh, well, so, uh, of course yeah. you were out on the weekend. Uh, tell me about that. What were you up to? So for just beginning for the viewer that uh, just oh, yeah, joined same. and uh, we are in YouTube, but as you know, we are all, always uh, live streaming in Rumble, Odyssey and Getter. So sometimes, as you know, YouTube doesn't permit us to talk about a spicy topic, as you know, because uh, they don't like it. Uh, we cannot uh, argue on some uh, on some science uh, uh topic so I don't think today we will touch this kind of uh, wavy topic but uh, in case we will uh, tell you before changing platform but I think today it will be on our platform it will be YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey and Getter choose the one that you like and as well, you can send us some ch super chat. Uh, so if you want your question live on screen and you want us to answer your question, it can be anything you can ask in French and in English to say the army or just a regular like uh, thing that you want to know. Uh, feel free to send us some super chat. We will read it uh, at the end of our live stream. So let's start with uh, this weekend. As you know, it was a big Canadian nationwide protest in support of the Dutch farmer, because as you know, we sent Lincoln J and Lewis Brackpool in Netherlands to report on the Dutch former rebellion there. Uh, as you know, Mark Rutte is one of the uh, contributors of the Agenda 2030 of the World Economic Forum and now is putting in place new regulation on the emission of nitrogen and carbon emission. And so that will impact straight away their life and as well what they will produce as a um, food production. So that will impact us also. But as you know, um, it's not finished because Mr. Justin Trudeau, we will talk about it a little bit later, but Justin Trudeau have uh, put in place the same regulation, about the same regulation here in Canada, but we will talk about that a little bit later. But now we talk about what happened this weekend. We had many reporters everywhere in Canada reporting on the nationwide protests. I was in Ottawa because, as you know, I'm with uh, William uh, to report uh, on uh, Ottawa, as you know, since the Freedom Convoy, the police are putting in place more restriction, more uh, perimeter to protect and lock down as well. So it's what they did. Again, they did lock down the downtown core Ottawa, and it was looking a little bit like the red zone just after the Freedom Convoy. And I was like, this is going a little bit too far because the protest was not as big as that. We had like, yes, a convoy that uh, started um, in uh, Kana Katanaka, or I, I have a hard time to pronounce it, but it's a center uh, outside of the city. Um, he had other one that was coming from other uh, place around the city too, that they all merge um, close to Ottawa. And so they were just driving around until like the police just decided to block them and say, you cannot just drive around. This uh, road is not made for that. So, and afterward they just block every corner of the street. No car was allowed to pass. And I just feel it's just sad for maybe Ottawa city because they didn't do anything wrong or like they didn't really disturb anything they were just driving around with their flag and i think that was bothering them and they just decided that now it was not legal to drive around so you need to walk instead so that is a nice shot where 
we see like all the Dutch flag upside down with the Canada flag. And um, that was actually a really nice day until it, ra it, did, it rained at the end of the day, but it was really hot. People were really happy. Um, I don't know, did you, have you been on the ground on Saturday to report on, on your side? Uh, on Saturday, no, uh, although we did have Mocha and Celine, they were out and they saw uh, some of the convoy that was here in Alberta headed up to the Edmonton legislature, I believe, uh, uh, also with the Pope being in attendance in Edmonton, but we'll get to that a bit later. Uh, and yeah, you can see the numbers out in force. Uh, for them, they weren't protesting within the city just yet, they were on their way, uh, and I don't know if we have some of that footage of them uh, just covering the highway. Uh, there's, there was a fair fair amount of people out there, and I believe that there wasn't really much media coverage of this event except for ourselves uh, throughout Canada. So it's unfortunate, but as you can see, there's quite the numbers out there in support uh, of what's happening and in protest of what's going on in the Netherlands and as well here in Canada, unfortunately. That one was crazy. Uh, us, it was nice too, but not as big as that. That, that was a really good shot of uh, the convoy. Uh, that's, that's, is really surprising. Like every time it's just like so much people go out there, same if it's really hot that this time. And this, yeah. this shot is actually a beautiful shot with the, the big, uh, truck, but it's nice to see that we do support Netherlands because we know where everything is going. Uh, a lot of people were having like waving some, I won't eat bugs, uh, <laughs> As you know, you can sign our petition at IWantEatBugs.com. <laughs> but like uh, everybody is really uh, wake up on what is going on and uh, they don't want um, to see their farmland taken away for a cricket farm. Uh, same if like they say, oh, it's good for climate change. I'm not really sure of that. I think it's just uh, another way to control. But you did some video you uh, about the bugs <laughs> at the st yep. temple. Uh, what uh, is the, the stampede? Yeah, yeah stampede. Yeah, this is like, look at that. It's so nice to see how many of us that catch all of this. We were the only media on the ground. I saw one person for from CTV that stayed there for five minutes, I think. But this, this is about that. Like nobody did report on all the protests around the world. So all people out there. And in Canada, know that you have some people who still protest or still are stand up and are still against what the government is imposing on us. Nobody, if we were not there, nobody would not have known. Yeah. Well, and I believe to some extent that was the same thing in the Netherlands. Of course, there was uh, a lot more going on there and it was more broad and there was more journalists on the scene. Um, but none of the mainstream media, I believe, it was all independent journalists or smaller time uh, news outlets. Uh, and it's very unfortunate that that was happening there. And as well, of course, we know it's happening here. We see it every day, the censorship and the, the blind eye uh, that's being cast, like when they couldn't ignore the protests that were happening in Ottawa originally. Um, and then they, as soon as they had to kind of reveal how large it was, they immediately mm -hmm. started casting it in a negative light, which I think is very unfortunate. Yeah, but this is <laughs> always like trying to find something negative to like say that uh oh, finally was not for good or and and i i would say us um nothing really bad happened until uh, a woman put the table on the ground and so the police did surround the table and ask i don't i, I would not say ask i would say it was an order to remove the mm -hmm. the table so we saw the protests are re being really angry and like surrounding the police and say like what are you doing? She's just selling some, uh, I think it was church uh, item. And uh, mm -hmm. they were really, really like mad at the police because they were like, she don't, she don't do anything wrong. It's just a table on the ground. And like a couple of feet away where is the apartment, they have like uh, the Chinese like food, the stand where they are were selling like food. So what is the problem to have like a woman with like a, just a small table to, to sell some some uh, item, you know? So yeah. anyway, so the police intervened, they, they removed the table and during that time, the convoy was able, was able to pass through 
uh, inside of the downtown core until like the the police did remove all of them and clear the perimeter. But this is like the parking, the, the video you just saw, it was in, in the parking where I found the, the first convoy around 12. And uh, they actually drove all around the city and they came back to the Dutch embassy at the end for protesting and on support of the Dutch uh, people. Yeah. But nothing bad happened. I don't think for um, Mocha or Sinin as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, then that was just mostly a straight shot through the highway. Um, but I mean, of course, in a lot of this, if you want to go to our uh, World Economic Forum coverage, uh, which uh, preceded the events in the Netherlands, well, it, it does show you extensively that there is, I guess you could say, a plan going on or an agenda that they have that they're trying to fulfill. Uh, and we're seeing the steps in real time. And uh, as you know, Sid and me, we were the two journalists to tickle the eating bugs uh, strategy that they want to implement on us. Uh, you did great. Uh, you offer a hot dog with oh, like likewise. what, crickets? Uh, yeah. This one was, uh, oh, it was something. All, all people did react to that. Uh, it, it was interesting. There's because it was at the Stampede. The Stampede is kind of a carnival festival. It's an event um, that takes place throughout the city, and it's very engaged with the younger people, uh, who will just kind of go out there and have fun. You know, there is alcohol to some extent, uh, but mostly it's just fun. There's food. There's a lot going on there, um, and it happens to be the case that there is oh. some cricket hot dogs and some worm hot dogs. And uh, I there were some people who were more than willing. You know, it's just fun times for them. Uh, and other people who, of course, there's some people who are going to be mildly or moderately okay with it, or even perhaps enthusiastic about it. But in general, most people look at that and think, well, this shouldn't be forced into my diet. And I ask the question, you know, if you had to switch from eating meat to only eating bugs in terms of protein, well, you know, would you be okay with that? And most people, I think, took the, the right road uh, and said that they would prefer to stick to their meats instead of their bugs. But that isn't to shame yeah. people who perhaps need to eat bugs for any variety of reasons, or, you know, I'm sure there's some people who enjoy it, but it's uh, it's not my cup of tea. No, no it, do it doesn't look good, but <laughs> why putting like the sausage, if you want really to change the meat for bugs, just put the bugs <laughs> in the bun, no? Well, I think it's, it's a matter of familiarization, right? It's before you can just hand somebody a plate of bugs, you got to hand somebody a plate that they're familiar with, with a little bit of bug inside it. it. It gets people comfortable to the idea to some extent. Uh, not everybody, that's for sure, and uh, luckily so, but I think it is uh, the process of normalization, much like we saw this uh, giant farm, an insect farm being opened up in London. I believe the headlines were mm -hmm. one of the largest, if not the largest uh, insect farm in the world. And we have another one here no. in Alberta. Um, <laughs> that's- uh, No, um, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, but it's interesting. Right now, these facilities are for, uh, well, insects that usually go towards feed or other stuff for animals. And they have a variety of uses, but not directly human consumption. Uh, but the problem is, well, first you need the infrastructure, which is what they're developing now. And then once you have that infrastructure, you can separate that from the, the feed that goes to the animals, so to speak, and the feed that goes to humans. The thing was moving in the plate. I'm, I'm sorry, no, 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 no. Although, no. Alexa, I mean, <laughs> there is one, uh, uh, I'll admit this, there, there's one kind of insect that I uh, I have enjoyed quite a bit in the past, and that is escargot. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, but I, uh, that's that's the one exception I have uh, to yeah, the, the yeah. insect that. But escargot is good, like, it's different, it's like... I would say we put so much like garlic butter and cheese on top that it doesn't taste anything at the end of the day. It's just chewy. Yeah. It's really it, chewy. For, for me, it was a mixture of garlic, parsley, butter, and salt. That's all you could taste. And that's, that's what made it so, right? Um, yeah. But nonetheless, I, uh, beyond that, I, I would not encourage any other insect supplementary uh, foods, to say the least. You should tell like your story with the caterpillar. This is a good one. Oh. <laughs> well, and, so when I was younger, um, the one insect I had before, well, maybe not before escargot, but the one insect I had that was alternative to escargot was a, uh, a curried 
caterpillar that seemed to have been perhaps maybe it was oven roasted maybe it was it was too long for me to remember exactly how it was served but it was just a caterpillar mushy very curry flavored that was about it and it was very crunchy but in a wrong way and I, <laughs> i'm not sure how further i can elaborate but that was uh, um not the most pleasant dish but at the same time it was uh, it was part of a potluck event and um it did give me a little bit of a, a respect for there are other cultures who eat a wide, a wide range of things um, that us in North America just generally aren't accustomed to. Um, although I still would not take the road that was presented to me. Well, yeah, see, yeah. On this, I think we'll go to a hat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. This is, no. oh my God, no, no, no. <laughs> No. Uh, so do we have like an ad uh, for showing to our viewer? So I absolutely love having the opportunity to chat with you, to chat with our ever-growing audience. But I'd actually love for you to have that opportunity as well. We actually have advertising opportunities available with rebelnews.com. We don't get handouts from the government. We trust on supporters, viewers, okay. and advertisers like you. So instead of folks listening to me in this spot, they could actually be checking out your company, getting information about your business. For more information or to advertise with us, send an email to ads at rebelnews.com. So oh, there you yeah. go. Got to get your merch. Yeah, you use the code like summer. It, so it's it's still the time to use the code summer. It's really a good deal for every two unisex shirt. You have one for free. We and free shipping everywhere in the world. And as well, if you just want one shirt or just one T-shirt, you can use our Sid code or mine. Sid, which one is yours? I believe mine is Sid10. Uh, I'll be corrected if otherwise. And what was yours? Me, it's Alexa10. So uh, I have the Justin Castro one. It's my favorite. I really like it. And um, you can have like so much different. We have some mugs too. Nice mug. I like mine. And um, we have some, hoodies some for and the... hats. Yeah. And we have some for the truckers for showing you support of the Dutch. Uh, the Dutch farmer. We have some uh, to expose the Great Reset with the World Economic Forum. Um, I have the one uh, you will own nothing and you will be happy. We should like add like uh, and you will eat bugs. <laughs> uh, we have the monkeypox since uh, they, de they, they wanted to declare the emergency um, health emergency on that. Uh, so we'll see what the, the future will happen for us about the health emergency so yeah you can have like you have so much different choice of merch i uh seriously invite you to go and uh, have a look i think uh, it's a really nice and it's a nice way to support our journalism and you can as well um show that you support us and you can treat yourself with one of our nice uh stuff that we we sell i have like a lot and i would say they are really comfortable uh, especially the OD, the one that you wear. Yeah. I love it too. <laughs> uh, it is very soft on the inside, I'll admit. Yeah. So let's see. Um, we have like a clip of uh, Mr. Trudeau talking about the carbon tax and as well fer fertilizer. How do you say it in English? Uh, fer fertilizer? No, fer 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 yeah. I, I have a hard time with some word. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's take some clip of that. And Canada is one of the top three uh, oil and gas producing company, countries in the world. But if we can demonstrate, as we are, that we can go greener, faster than many other countries. We're one of the, the you know, few countries that actually brought in a price on pollution right across the country. 
and then had two elections where that uh, price on pollution was upheld. That's a clear indication that Canadians understand that it's not just important for the air, for the water, for future generations. It's important for our bottom line. It's important for food on our table. It's important for our economic growth to be innovative and leading the world on this. And that's what we've been doing. And that's what we're so excited about working with partners around the, around the country on. And it just boggles my mind that the Conservatives are having a debate over their leadership right now. And they're still arguing about whether or not we need to move forward on the fight against climate change. There's very few people in this country who still think that you can have a plan for the economy without having a plan for the environment. And most of those people seem to be running for the Conservative leadership. Well, he doesn't oh, know anything about uh, economics now, does he? So what's he talking about? I, I will say this. First of all, this looks like uh, I'm running for a campaign for an election that's coming soon because it looks like that because it's bashing Conservative and say, oh, we will do like so much change with the ch climate change. And oh, yeah. What about you, Jet? What about like all like your carbon that you spend that no more people doesn't do that? Like no more people do, do not do that. And like all the meat and the meal that you take and, and, and now us, we, we should like all change our way to live, our way to be. Because kind of people like you don't do some effort. But us, we need to do all the effort to make change. What do you think about that? Well, it's kind of like, uh, and I still love this tweet from uh, one of our reporters in England, Lewis Brackpool, uh, when he was at uh, COP26 or one of the environmental summit meeting things. Uh, and they had a net zero uh, billboard on the highway mm. that was being powered by a diesel generator. And that's kind of the environmental movement summed up in a nutshell. That is exactly it. And uh, I've, I've seen the Planet of the Humans. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that movie. Uh, but there's this yeah. environmental concert that they have, and then they end up having a backup generator for it because it rains. So their whole environmental scheme is ruined. And that's the same thing. When there's no wind, there's no wind power. When there's no uh, tidal power, well, that's a small thing, uh, tidal power. But when there's no sun out, there's no sun energy, or there's no solar energy that you're going to be able to accrue. Uh, and then this whole idea of promoting us being on these alternative sources of energy, they're not green, they're just alternative. Uh, the notion of being on these alternative sources of energy just means that you're going to have to have these diesel generators, these oil generators, all these facilities that are using uh, oil and uh, byproducts like that to produce energy. They're going to have to remain on idle all the time. You're not able to shut them down because anytime there's a lapse in wind, you're going to have to use that generator power from uh, diesel fuel or whatever other fuel might be consumed. Yeah, this all is right. I, I, I found that a little bit like it critical like the, the way that they are doing it like they try to make change for ch climate change but they use some really polluted like way to show and to make people in fear about it i don't know if you understand like uh, they use really fear tactical but they use pollution to create this fear and so people are just like well we need to do something but at the end of the day you just you oh. just make make all worse at the end. Just let people live their life. Just make people understand that over consummation that we are doing, it's probably not the best. But it just when we look at that, okay, we are capable to live our life really well with the basic. As I say, like, uh, we don't need to go to the restaurant every day because some of people do it. And, and when we buy something at the grocery, make sure that you're not wasting it like try to 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 cook your your meat froze it if you need but the thing is like so many people are throwing like restaurants are big 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 like waster like like when they cannot like sell the, their food or most of the people who doesn't finish their plate that all go to the the garbage. I know I, I was working in restaurant for many, many years. And I think the only restaurant where I was I kind of proud to really work, it was uh, in Gaspésie, La Maison du Pêcheur, because about 90% of what we were throwing was going to the compost. We compost everything. 
So, and this is, I think this is the most like dangerous things. It's like the over consummation. I don't know about you, but it, it's about our, the way the society have been like changed through the, the decade, you know? Well, that's a, that is certainly a big factor. I mean, we've been trained almost to be, well, not almost, we've been trained to be consumers. Uh, and one of the byproducts of being heavy consumers is all the waste that will be associated with that. Um, and much like your point, though, there's the us, you know, on the, the smaller side of things, you know, there's only a certain amount of, uh, you know, environmental damage, I guess you could say that I could do in a day or that you could do in a day. Whereas Trudeau uh, and Mocha, our chief uh, videographer, did a great piece on this, his visit to Calgary recently uh, before his uh, one currently, where he, he basically went down there for a liberal uh, photo shoot. Uh, and then he said he was at the stampede, you know, flipping pancakes and whatever, uh, well away from the official stampede grounds, not the ones that are dispersed around the city. Uh, and how much was that? Would maybe like seven thousand dollars in jet fuel for a three hour visit? And that's one way mm -hmm. jet fuel costs probably. Yeah. For what? Sure. Like if you want to claim that you're for the environment and this is the kind of expenditure you're willing to put out there just so you can flip some pancakes and take some photos. I mean, let's let's be real about this issue. Yeah. And, and nobody would no big media would talk about it how much like fuel like mr trudeau have spent for just a photo shoot and and why a photo shoot because probably they will like probably a lot of people say that we will have an election soon so i don't think if it's a good thing for him or a bad thing what do you think do you think it's good for him or bad if it's uh it's going in election well, first, let me ask, why do you think that'll happen? Or what, what would lead you to, to assume so? So a lot of people think of that because, first of all, not, not, of course, he cut his hair, but it's like it's, it's a way that he's always do before like election. But as well, like every Twitter post that he's doing is mostly more directly. We, we, as a liberal, we did that. We, he tried to support what he did in the past to say like we did great and we we would go further and like it's always kind of pushing um, the the good action that he did as a uh, liberal and it you is mean like um, it, and he's bashing a oh, lot yeah. of conservative party so you saw it in the the last video like it is bashing on the conservative and trying to make him upper and i know that i think it's um is it toronto sun did the uh, is look like that uh, mr trudeau look like more going in a campaign than a summer tour because well, he's not talking about think, the real thing well i i think part of it um i think and I thought about this, you know, hearing and seeing that he was going to all these different places. Um, my first thought wasn't that he was going to be running for re-election. Uh, my thought was that he's just trying to make himself look as good as he can right now because he's probably going to, well, I, I don't want to assume so or put this out there, but, you know, we might get locked down again and this whole monkeypox thing uh, will bring us to the depths of COVID as we've seen in the past. Uh, I think he's maybe preparing for something in the fall just getting his positivity out there, making people like him. I wouldn't say re-election because why would he, he would be the one who would have to call the camp or have to call the election, right? After his ties with the NDP, I, I would think. Mm -hmm. but that was my thoughts, I guess. A, I'm not sure. What, what, how do you think about that? I, it just, it just, a lot of people say that inflation was, uh, is not going to be better, especially that winter is coming and a lot of people are, a lot of people, in, in the article that I read, in I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's Toronto Sun. I'm not completely sure, but um, with the inflation that's getting worse and the fact that he's not really talking about the real problem here, he's not talking about, about inflation. He's not talking. Yeah, it's Toronto Sun. So he's not talking about the real issue. It's just focusing on saying, "Oh, we did gr good, good uh, thing." We do better, and it's not it's not going in real topic. It's always getting like on surface and trying to shine. Where is I'm sorry, but you cannot shine on your disastrous management on the last two years, where you did divide the population into 
part. So, and, and it's probably why people get so angry because it's traveling everywhere and people have real question about like, what is going on? Like we cannot afford our rental. We cannot afford our food, our gas. And, um, we struggle. We have question for you when it got, we got better for us and it's not talking to them in your what is going on and just like touching nothing as important question well I, I don't think he can to be honest i think he's uh he's kind of of that mind where you never admit fault or failure uh and mm -hmm. part of that is not being able to have these conversations you know he'll he'll put the lipstick on you know and he'll do his little <laughs> dance routine around the country but at the end of the day, he'll never be able to talk about these serious issues because the moment he takes a step back and apologizes for something, that opens the door to all of the criticism that's due his way. Yeah, but true. But in the same time, you run. You, you are the she, yeah. chief of the, the country. You need to do something because, like, do you know how many problem, mental problems we will have soon? Depression and, like... People who think about suicide because they don't know how they will go out of this dark, darkest time. So um, actually, yeah. that's uh, that's one of the things Trudeau did uh, recently, is it not? Where he uh, brought in a, or made it easier for euthanasia or assisted death or assisted suicide, however they want to call it. And that's that's kind of the outlet he's willing to provide. I mean, through everything, through all of the coronavirus measures. I mean, and you mentioned the mental health of people. Well, this has been a struggle for us for the last two, over two years now. And he's just smiled and said, we're in this together. Meanwhile, yeah. well, look at him. Look what he So, and it, it's why people need to stay united, you know, like as, as the, during convoy, people can get to know each other and be together. And if something happened, at least they, they know that they have a good circle of people as like uh, with Mocha during the convoy, like the, the video that he, he did. Uh, let's check uh, a part of it. Celine Gallis here for Rebel News. And this morning I'm joined by my colleague Mocha Bazir again, as we are here at the Flying J in Calgary AP, following a convoy that Ooh. is on, <laughs> following a convoy that is set to arrive later today in Edmonton. I've talked to some folks here about why they're here. Um, and it seems that they are here to stand in solidarity with the former rebellion that is taking place in the Netherlands. For more, as always, if you want to see the full coverage, go to farmerrebellion.com. Okay, yeah, so what brings you out here this morning? I am standing for the people, uh, for our children, uh, freedom for the farmers, and uh, just unite. We're uh, definitely uh, divided right now, so I'm here for the people and my children, our children. Howdy, how's it going? <laughs> Reverend Kevin Black Bomber 69. Reverend Kevin's in the hustle. You betcha. 777 Wellington Street was my address up in Ottawa. I know a lot of the mandates have come, they're talking all the different stuff to come back on and we're just we're just making sure what we want to do is just keep Canada awake, join the Dutch, everything they've done has been amazing and we're going to back them 150%. I do, I do. I myself went up to Ottawa with uh, Mocha here. So tell me a little bit more about this uh, vehicle we see right here. This is Unity One. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? And uh, she's pretty special. She's been to the front line. She's had over 100 convoys. And is it right that you're out here today to protest in solidarity with the uh, rebellion going on in the Netherlands right now? 150% to support our brothers and sisters. And if this is happening in the Netherlands, do you think that we could see this trickle down into Canada at some point? Trudeau is already uh, a, a proud supporter of WEF and the UN Agenda 2030, which they've already written for those that do their research, what's going to happen. And this uh, nitrogen green deal that Trudeau is endorsing as well, reduces our farms by 50%. 
I think not. When do we say enough is enough and stand up and say enough of this tyranny? Uh, we have to. So we're continuing the bear hug tradition, love, peace, unity, standing up in solidarity for what's right and what's just and the truth. You know, I grew up a farm girl. I'm a trucker. I can't truck in the U.S. because I'm allergic. I'm vaccine injured. Yeah. I can't take a second shot. I tried to follow the rules. My heart almost exploded seven times. And so now I can't work and I'm an oversized driver. I'm here to stand in solidarity with the Dutch. The Dutch farmers, they're being cut back 30%. All the small farmers, the large farmers are allowed to keep them all, the corporations. And as of last night, it came out they're doing the same here in Canada. So I'm not impressed. Are we really surprised with the things that Trudeau has been doing within the last couple of months, right? I think the initial convoy really um, struck a lot of fear in this man, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. it struck fear. He's, he's fearful, he's running, that's why he's crossing the country like crazy, fast yeah. as can be, yeah. and he's not letting it know where he's going to be. What would be your message to the WEF? Huh. Come try and make me eat bugs, because you know what? I'm going to hand you a shovel, and I'm going to teach you how to grow food and feed animals. There you go. Because you are going to work for me. I will not work for you. I love that. Right now we are in Old Alberta. Here, as you can see, stopped on the side of the road is a little tiny speck of the convoy that is waiting to join the larger one coming up from Calgary, Alberta that we've seen today. So what brings you guys um, to this stop here on the side of the road today in Old Alberta? Uh, well, we're headed up to Edmonton as part of the convoy to show our support for farmers here, Netherlands, around the world that are protesting against government overreach. Right. And if you had a message to the WEF, what would it be today? I would say that uh, starving out the world to try to uh, put their plan in place is maybe not the smartest thing to do. When people are starving, they tend to do... Hey, Adam, how are We're you? We're back, I guess. Uh, I'm good. Yes. So can you tell... This camera you really are... doesn't like focusing. Uh, oh, oh, no, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so we are really interested because Adam, right now you are at the Pope event. Can you tell us a little bit uh, what is going on? Yeah, so I'm actually, uh, Mocha and Celine went down there. Um, we are having a little bit of uh, issues because there, there's been so much media applying and there's so many local people wanting to attend these events as well um, that we're not sure just exactly how much of the stuff we're going to actually be able to get into. Um, so far, we actually haven't been granted, despite being fully accredited, um, access to a, a series of the events because some of these events, there's 50 spots or... 30 spots um so, so they're they're kind of going through the lists we still don't know for tomorrow who will have access to what they only just now let us know some of the events for today that will be taking place and who can get in so mocha and celine are um where the pope actually is which is probably about 100 kilometers uh, away in uh, masquachitz um and and pope francis is there presently i'm not sure exactly how close mocha and celine have got to the action there um i'm in edmonton actually at the media hub which is where sort of there's probably about 70 100 people People here um, we've got big screens um, with the ongoing proceedings of uh, Pope Francis moving through uh, Masquachis there um, hundreds if not thousands of people in attendance at that event um, uh, they're going to be visiting one of the sort of former residential schools as well as, well as uh, I believe a local cemetery um, but Pope Francis is basically being pushed through on his wheelchair um, through through the territory and meeting some people meeting with some of the t uh, chiefs and indigenous leaders um, so yeah it's uh, it's definitely a sight to behold here and how, how um, do you feel the vibe there with like the, all the people that are around <clears throat> yeah you know I think the the there's probably some pretty distinct camps um, as far as the uh, moods. Um, coincidentally, right as I walked up on my first day here, before I even got my media accreditation, um, a lady who is, uh, I guess she's been a journalist for 25 years on Indigenous matters, uh, works up in the territories. Um, she said she's actually a residential school survivor and she's reporting on this. Um, there are two camps that are that are kind of probably predominant. Um, and that is... Um, 
camps concerned with Pope Francis's presence, and then the other camp would be the camp concerned with the politicization happening by Justin Trudeau. Um, so uh, the general sentiment, I think people attending these events who are being able to participate, spend time with the Pope, maybe people with strong Catholic faith, um, they're, I think, happy he's here and think that there could be some positive outcomes from this. At the very least, on a symbolic level, he's he's present, and I think people appreciate that. From people who aren't necessarily allowed into these events, who aren't participating directly, who have spoken out on the street with, um, they're saying that it's basically just a, an empty apology tour um, and that th this isn't concrete action. Some questioning the allocation of resources um, towards this, what amounts to an apology tour. Um, on the other front, though, I, I've not really spoken to anybody who's been in, in favor of Justin Trudeau's constant finger pointing at the church. Um, the fact is, it, it is the federal government that mandated these schools, that paid for them, that went around rounding up children. Um, that is the legacy of residential schools in this country. And for Justin Trudeau, when the liberal government, his own father, Chrétien, oversaw the legacy of residential schools towards its end, with these only ending in 1996, shockingly, um, people are are not buying Trudeau's phony uh, narrative. I spoke with a residential school survivor who said he's in this only for his own agenda. He does not have the back of Indigenous people. Um, so yeah, it's 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 tense. It's very divided. Um, I do think that there's a lot of tension as well. And feel free to jump in at any point if you have questions. But there is a lot of tension because so much of Pope Francis's trip was predicated on the uh, quote unquote mass graves, which when you speak to indigenous people, they know that there's not newly discovered mass graves. They've known about these burials for a long time. Now, some of them are cemeteries that, that were lost to history. Some of them we've now learned are in fact old apple orchards. And that was what they thought was the discovery of a quote unquote mass grave. Um, so there's been a lot of, I spoke with Father Christina Bouvet, who's involved with the organization. Um, there's been a lot of sort of picking at the scab of truth and reconciliation um, and people politically, the intention of this and what Pope Francis wants is to come together to pray, um, to show a sign of solidarity Solidarity. And given that this Pope is very concerned with social teachings, probably advocate for some meaningful change on current indig Indigenous issues. Um, but what we've seen with politicians like Justin Trudeau is finger pointing, um, blaming, division, rhetoric. And, and the media has been complicit in that as well with these headlines that we've now learned, Andrea doing some incredible work, our own Drea Humphreys, um, on exposing sort of the actual facts behind the quote unquote mass graves. Um, but yeah, it's very. There is a great deal of sort of uh, Justin Trudeau politicization and whitewashing going on, where they're in, they're they're stamping their own sort of narrative over this whole thing, vilifying the Pope as opposed to the government taking on ownership. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's uh, right as this sort of events unfolded today, uh, sort of biblical clouds rolled in, and it's kind of gloomy and and. Uh, glib today looking at the video of the live action and the people around pope francis they certainly seem to be getting something out of it um but it, it's tense i'm not gonna lie yeah do, do you know if um they had like a lot of protester um that was happening uh, against the visit of the pope or did you saw any yeah there there was some there were some people chanting both for and against obviously um as well some of the politicians having their large sort of convoys and security and all that i do know for example that uh, mask which he's, this morning was one of the first instances because it was uh, yesterday pope francis basically arrived and went and then he took the rest of the day off um today is going to be the first instance where uh, there there are large gatherings where people could theoretically cluster and protest in a significant way. Um, I know Masquichi is given that it is First Nations territory and they want to sort of re respect that. They've set up significant barricades. Mocha and Celine will have a report on what happened there um, as far as if there were tensions or anything like that. But I know from looking at the screens, everything is being kept quite a bit of ways, which is, which is pretty easy when you're talking about a very remote, small community. Now, uh, later on today, and I'm going to be cautious because some of the information for security reasons is under embargoes, but Pope Francis is set to visit a number of locations within the city um, today, a church as well. 
Tomorrow there will also be mass at Commonwealth Stadium with something like 65,000 people expected to attend. We are almost certain that there will be protests tonight at the gathering near this church. Um, I actually drove by earlier and there's blocks shut off with police everywhere. And this is not happening for hours and hours yet, but they've completely shut the area down. Um, so there is likely to be protests there and almost certainly to be protests um, outside of the big mass tomorrow. That is virtually a guarantee. Um, the other event tomorrow after Afternoon is again an hour and a half outside of town at a traditional uh, uh, indigenous sort of pilgrimage site like Lac Saint Anne that is very significant to Catholics. So that again, one of those farther ones. But the 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 ones that I'm I'm most concerned about as far as protests would be the church visit today and then outside of mass tomorrow. And we will be covering it. We will have people on the inside of these things or at least adjacent to it. But then also covering the action from the outside, bringing the other side of the story, um, talking to people about why they're protesting. There is clearly a lot of it, misinformation, and there are people who have definitely bought into some of the rhetoric because um, some people are still referencing um, the discovery of a mass grave that, for example, we know is not a mass grave or is an abandoned. Um, the media that was so quick to rush out there with those contentious and divisive headlines, they weren't quite so quick to issue corrections and retract and, and remedy those those divisions and harms that they cause. So some people, I think, are still very radicalized by that sentiment. And that's testified to the fact by uh, we saw arson and mass vandalism at churches across this country. Some churches, which, by the way, weren't Catholic, didn't even exist during the time of residential schools, belonged to communities like a Vietnamese community that escaped communist oppression in Vietnam. Um, so this this outrage is very often, despite the fact, and there's no discounting what happened to residential schools. Um, I have heard just absolute horror stories of things that did happen from people, personal testimony, um, some of it outright abuse, other things, even Father Christina Bouvet, who I mentioned, um, his own mom wasn't allowed to attend, I believe, her brother's funeral, even though they were at schools adjacent to each other, just because there was no consideration for the family whatsoever. Um, so this doesn't discount what happened in the residential schools. But if you don't have truth and you're not having honest dialogue, um, if you're basing your reconciliation efforts on uh, it, intentionally inflammatory lies and misinformation, you're never going to get anywhere productively. Yeah, especially because they didn't find anybody, any uh, anything on the ground. So, um, do do how do you feel of just just before he came, it went out that no nobody was found uh, finally. So, what what is your thought about this? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think I think that's one of the core issues is is they they have this eighty five year old man being wheelchaired around across the country because Justin Trudeau basically taunted him off of this misinformation. Um, Justin Trudeau is a lot of time spending uh, chatting about misinformation. Um, so ultimately, this guy is, is being paraded around the country at 85 years old in very poor health um, because of the mass graves, which we've now, every scientific evidence indicates um, that there aren't mass graves. I think there might be a couple people um, when they go back throughout history, and I mean, don't don't quote me on this, but I believe there are some individuals where they weren't properly documented or they weren't buried. Um, there were also, there were instances where there was like tuberculosis outbreaks and they had to deal with these situations. But in every one of those instances, there was a burial, there was records of this. They weren't simply disposing of bodies haphazardly that is not part of the legacy that's not one of the sort of wrongs that needs to be addressed the wrongs that need to be addressed are the sort of cultural there's this term sort of cultural genocide um, which which may seem a bit dramatic but very much the intention of the federal government with residential schools was to uh, appropriate and and amalgamate indigenous people into western culture and destroy their culture that we saw very much um, and while there wasn't genocide literally really happening there was certainly an effort to eradicate their history their religion their communities um that we know that that happened that's that was the basis of the residential schools as as recently as pierre Elliott trudeau referenced that legacy and how that was part of the plan so um but yeah the 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 efforts the efforts to make reconciliation hinged on a tour that's based on mass graves that seem to have not existed as problematic. Another sort of personal consideration that I have, and when I mention it to people, they seem to be unanimously inclined that this is probably a sensible solution. Um, the, the mentality and the sort of legacy of residential 
schools stem from an inherent sort of racism from the government. That's not progressive talk. That's that's what happened. Um, but it's so interesting today. We simply would not be OK if uh, um, I, I'm going to say this term to sort of make the point. But if a white community or a urban community um, or a uh, rural or even a small town, if, if they had a boil water advisory or a water crisis for like a month, people would be outraged. It simply wouldn't stand. We, we, we've literally seen, and I've talked about this at length, it's just entirely unacceptable. We've seen indigenous communities where the water is literally toxic. The kids can, can't bath more than once a week or else their skin burns. Um, I've heard stories of, of all the women in certain indigenous communities, their arms from the arm down are red, like red, 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 a different color. And it's from washing dishes because the water is literally toxic or carcinogenic. Now, we can spend all the time in the world, and Pope Francis can tour the country ad nauseum, apologizing for what's happened in the past, or we can actually take steps to delete and annihilate the sort of underlying mentality that led to residential schools and address the current issues that Indigenous communities are facing. And when I'm speaking with Indigenous people here and proposing that, the, the sentiment is almost universally yes. Like, everyone has said sorry. Um, the sorry doesn't really make amends. You're forgiven, whatever. I appreciate you saying sorry, but what does that do to actually make amends? Well, Indigenous people are suffering today in Canada. If you don't want to show that you actually care about Indigenous communities, address the issues they're currently facing. Don't just make political campaigns like Justin Trudeau off the errors of the past. And uh, can you tell everybody like where we can see all the report about the Pope? Yeah, so they're, they're basically there. There's a central st uh, stream. It's what we're feeding off for right now. The CPAC footage, so everything is on CPAC. But then um, some of the some of the conventional broadcasters will just be sharing this this footage uh, ad nauseum. It, it's being put out, I believe, by Dome Productions. But everyone has access to it via CPAC and through a number of other networks. Um, I'm sure if you go to, I believe it's uh, Papal Visit or something like that. .c. I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, you'll be able to see the, the mainstream feeds. But for all of our coverage, we very much want to kind of tell the other side of the story, talk to people, not maybe necessarily the official spokesperson who's been put up there by the organization committee or the government or whatever. Um, but if you want to get the actual other side of the story, talking to people on the streets, getting people's opinions, maybe some of the protests, why they're there, what their issue is, all of that will be at our coverage at popereports.com. So um, our reports will include what was happening, what the Pope was doing. We'll have people inside as much as possible. But I think the best place to get your information, popereports.com, will have those sort of external perspectives um, and, and some of the some of the other side of the story. And we'll, we'll also be asking asking some of the really tough questions that I think, whether it be for what we've heard from Indigenous communities, whether it be from someone from the Catholic faith perspective like myself, um, it, you'll, you're going to have questions that are maybe a little bit challenging and a little bit different than just flat coverage of here's the Pope, he's saying sorry, hopefully everyone gets better. Um, that's wonderful, but honest honest reconciliation, and it requires difficult conversations, um, and we're ready and willing to have those conversations so that some good can actually come of this in a, in a tangible way. Uh, thank you so much for the update. Thank you for bringing us uh, the other side of the story of what is happening right now. I think you will have like a really busy day. I think uh, you have like yeah. lots to do still. So thank you to jump on with us. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I wish you um, a nice uh, uh, evening. Good luck out Thanks there. so much. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Good luck. I really appreciate it. <laughs> See you next time. See you next time. My mug. I know, it's pretty cool. So is this hoodie I got on, and you could have it on too if you check out our special website at rebelnewsstore.com. That's where you can see Freedom Focus hoodies that we have for you, beanies, cell phone cases, you name it, all while supporting our journalism where we fight to bring you the other side of the story as opposed to, you know, being forced by the Trudeau government to fund leftist media out of your taxes. The truth is, Without you and your generosity, there is no Rebel News. So again, if you like the reports that we bring you and that we also fight for freedoms in Canada, please consider doing some shopping, picking up some swag at rebelnewsstore.com. We appreciate your support.
I love Drea. She's always nice. <laughs> I would love to be so much fluent, fluent in English like that. One day, one day. Um, well, yes. So you uh, have a leg up on me. I, I, I can't touch the surface of French. <laughs> oh, yeah. But at least I speak two languages. That, uh, that's uh, something I would say. <laughs> what do you think about like all of this around like the Pope visit and um, and everything? What what is it about? Oh, it's very interesting. And I think uh, Adam alluded to this kind of being an apology tour, um, which whether or not it's merited, I think sure it's good that it's being done, perhaps, uh, but. Uh, this Trudeau kind of overseeing the event to some capacity, I think, has tainted it, uh, certainly to some degree. And as well, as well, sorry, on uh, residential schools, the kind of uh, topic of relation to this, it, there is, uh, Andrea as well, uh, is working on a little bit of a documentary on that. And there's a bit of a trailer uh, that we brought forward recently. So uh, we are going to be bringing you guys more uh, on the residential school story, and they're going to be going through that in full. Uh, so that's something I look forward to. Uh, and I don't know, how do you feel about that, Alexa? But for me, I, I'm heading to Quebec tomorrow. Uh, I need to be there because he's arriving in Quebec on uh, when, Wednesday. Wednesday. So it's, it's coming on Wednesday and staying until Friday morning uh, where he will, flew, he will fly. I don't know if he go to Equalo after or he already went there. But anyway, it will be there on Wednesday and th um, Thursday. And Thursday will be in uh, Saint-Anne um, de Beaupré, where is the famous church where, as you know, a lot of miracles have happened there. Um, so it's a, it's a place that a lot of people do visit because the hand of Mary is uh, on the wall. It's like uh, on the gold and it's uh, showing there. And um, so I'm going there with Guillaume, um, my my partner uh, in my team and uh, we will add there but as you know they will block all the road for kilometer uh, around because they don't want nobody else that doesn't have ticket to go to the event because as you know saint anne de beaupre is like kind of 30 minutes road like close to the water and if if that road is blocked by a lot of people who are trying to go to the event that will be like a big chaos so um we'll be there to report on this but i'm really curious to know like the opinion of the people about uh, the fact that justin trudeau asked the pope to go here to apologize a second time and as well as you know uh, justin trudeau that say oh we need to be careful for climate change ask the pope to come and private jet here in canada private jet to go a little bit everywhere around Canada and as well with like a big escort of motorbike with the um, RCMP and uh, all the these people to protect him. This is really good for the climate change. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, certainly. And it, it, yeah, it's amazing the, uh, the amount of gas that gets guzzled by their entourages and not just Trudeau or the Pope, but basically all of these world leaders. It, the amount of fuel they consume on a daily basis is surreal. Which yeah. is the main problem being that they're telling you not to and they go ahead and do it. But yeah, like one love for me and one love for D. It's, it's always what happened. Uh, we have a couple well, of chats um, if you want after. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have Adam Ottawa. Um, he say you should make a shirt with emotional support mask graphic. I heard Lincoln J use that term once while he was doing a story in Ottawa and been using it since. That's a. Uh, I I don't think I heard him saying that, but most of the time I'm not listening to him, so it's fine. <laughs> I like the uh, I like the term breathing barrier. Instead oh yeah, of calling yeah. it a mask. Just call it a breathing barrier. Call it what it is. Yeah, but because I met someone in Ottawa that say I'm wearing the mask and my glass uh, because mm -hmm. I don't want to be identified. I yeah. I don't want to be show my face since like everybody can identify you and 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 say oh you were there or were there now. 
See, it was not because she she wanted to wear a mask because she was afraid of something, but she she was just. I want to wear my mask and my glass because I don't want nobody to know who I am, where I'm going. Well, that's kind I'd, of uh, I'd actually love it. I, I'd love it if we could find out how much crime has increased directly because of the mask mandates that have been implemented. That would be a good question to answer, I think. I think we should dig on that. Yeah. 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 So Adam Ottawa gave uh, us another daughter. Thank you very much. Uh, he said, Maple Leaf Meat is now aggressively advertising that they are a net zero company. What does that mean? Is net zero the new organic? What is your thought? Yeah, Ned, I can see that being the new organic. I think the uh, the organic labels kind of faded over time. Uh, yeah, maybe net zero, carbon free. Those would be the, the new taglines on your steak, uh, even though I think that's a, a little bit absurd in and of itself. I mean, even the fact that all of these foods are being delivered to the grocery store via truck and other means of delivery. Well, let's let's not kid ourselves here. This, this is the only problem. Like People need to understand that back then we, when we we look at uh way before like our ancestor when they were digging the land and do like really the normal agriculture they were not net zero there and they were living perfectly okay so net zero it's insane to think to reach that will affect yeah. the 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 life itself yeah well, and you think about net zero, uh, and this is just like a, a fun note that I have on the topic, is how much carbon is expelled by a human every single day? Well, is this being factored or are they just measuring the factories? And another problem with this is, you know, we're pushing for net zero and uh, the de-fertilization uh, uh, efforts and stuff like this, such as the ones in the Netherlands with nitrogen, uh, carbon, methane, all of these things we're trying to reduce as much as we possibly can. And then you go over to China. <laughs> And you see that they're they're creating way more pollution than we're even able to create whatsoever. They just have the capacity to create so much pollution that is being blatantly ignored by our politicians on this side of the pond. Yeah, it's it for me. It's just completely like blowing my mind. But uh, in the same time, we are going towards something. We don't know yet what it is. But at Ruben News, we tr keep showing the other side of the story for make sure that everybody are in the same line and that people can see like every side and can understand the situation. But um, the last word go, go to you. And uh, thanks for everybody to tune in and thanks for being there. Oh, we have a, one more chat. I didn't know. Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. So... Can you read that one or I'm reading it? I can't let a day go by without kicking a buck or two. Love your stream. Well, we really appreciate that. The $5 donation uh, from Frasbow. I hope I pronounced that properly. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, it's nice as well because we always change like the people who do the live stream. So you can watch all our reporter to talk about so different topic because we are covering everywhere across Canada. But one day it would be fun to have maybe AV Mini to one of our live stream to but for them it's like completely the night. So probably it would be difficult, but maybe one day we we, we never know. And uh, yeah, last last word is for you, um Sid. Uh well I mean uh, not to be cheesy, but I just want to thank the viewers. I mean, it is because of our viewers that this is possible. I mean, most of the mainstream media outlets uh, that are out there, especially in Canada, they're they're getting huge bailouts by the government. So they're basically on the line to say what Trudeau needs them to say or act a certain way in accordance with being able to receive more funds in the future. Otherwise, they, I mean, in other words, they have to make Trudeau happy if they want to keep receiving that money, which is currently keeping them alive. So... Uh, we don't have that arrangement. We're completely dedicated to our viewers and we're funded by our viewers. That's what makes us a reality. And we're held accountable to our viewers, not Trudeau. And that's, I think, uh, well, I just want to thank all of our viewers for that, most specifically. And if I could end on one last thing, it's Alexa, you got to stop eating bugs to make the point. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, but 
I need to try at least, no? Uh, I'll leave that up for personal decision. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna bring some to you, like the big uh, tarantula oh, no. that's coming up. Like I order some tarantula, everybody. Yeah, that would be an incredible video. So please keep following our report, especially at I want eat bugs dot com yeah, everything about bugs eating the reaction of the people to eat some of them uh it's always hilarious and it, we need to push that we need to push to see to show that people are not ready they don't want that and because as as you know mainstream are just sh showing like oh it's good it's good for climate change it's good uh, uh, good protein uh, people need to change their habit we need to be prepared they try to to um, change our minding about it, but no, I'm not going to eat bugs, and I would not replace my meat for that. This was my last word. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. That's been your live stream for the day. And of course, check out everything we're doing at rebelnews.com. I'm not sure if there's uh, anything last you want to add, but thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. Well, the remains of 215 children have been found in a mass grave in Canada. Many of you know that just over a year ago, the discovery of the remains of 215 children was found at the Kamloops Indian Residential School at the Kamloops Shiswemek First Nation. But what if I were to show you that what I just said wasn't true, and that in fact, a year later, not a single body has been found? This mass grave is a painful reminder of the genocide. Canada's leaders aren't condemning the burning of churches. No, they're endorsing the burning of churches. A juvenile rib bone that surfaced in the same area. You'd be surprised the number of people who say, you know, I'm a doctor, I'm a paramedic. This is definitely a human bone, and it's hmm. definitely not. So the chief 